Hi, welcome back to Not So Obvious Watches. I'm Pete McConville, and this is my hot take on the new IWC Pilot Chronograph AMG Edition. First off, it's an AMG Edition, not limited, not special. This is going to be an everyday, run of the mill, core collection piece for IWC. So, a good one for all of you people that hate uh, limited editions. It's the first AMG collaboration IWC has not put on an ingenieur. So, that's interesting. Something I've got to stress right now, This my hot takes are deliberately called that. They are not critiques, they are not reviews. I've not been hands-on with these watches, so everything, every, everything I say here has to be heard through that lens. You have to understand that there are limits to how far my opinion can be trusted, for want of a better word. Uh, the other thing I would say is that when a lot of these hot takes, it only spends a little bit of time on the watch and often ve veers into other topics around design, usage, marketing, business, uh, all sorts of other things associated and growing from this watch. So don't be disappointed if the... Um, if the conversation goes off track a little bit, which it does on this hot take, you have been warned. Okay, I'll see you on the other side of the intro. Okay, so what's my hot take on the IWC Pilot Watch Chronograph AMG Edition? Um, it's lovely. <laughs> it's really nice. Um, I'm, I struggle with this watch. I struggle to get enthusiastic. I struggle to get excited about this watch. It's lovely. It's very nice. First off, look. It's built upon the classic IWC Pilot Watch Chronograph, which is a really, really well-refined, well-understood, beautifully executed design that IWC has been doing for a while. So it's always going to be handsome, and IWC are not going to cock that up. Then the design changes the the styling cues that they've used to tie this watch to amg mercedes cars and formula one are exactly what you should do the brushed uh, t5 titanium look the carbon weave dial is incredibly sensible it is the right choice it works it really does tie the classic bones of the pilot chronograph to the this more update, the high-tech, high-engineered, uh, high-end uh, ideals of Formula One. And yet, despite it being everything it should be, I struggle to get excited about it. Probably the first thing is because it is everything it should be. There's nothing particularly new or novel about this. It is very handsome. It's a good-looking piece but there's nothing exciting. There's nothing here that's really going to grab me and say, this is something I really need to see, really need to have, really need to wear. So all in all, it's a very, I'm sure it's going to be a beautifully well executed and, and very popular watch. I do have another problem with this watch as though too. And this one is much more about me than the watch itself. And that problem is, there's a little part of me that every time I look at this watch, I just think it looks like a really expensive micro brand. And that's terribly unfair. That is totally unreasonable of me. I hate, I really viscerally hate it when I see people on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube lazily throwing out the homage and the knockoff word. The idea that says any stainless steel bezel is a knockoff of a Rolex. Any of those large loopy Arabics is a knockoff of a Panerai. Any exposed screw is a knockoff of an AP. That, that really irritates me. 
And the worst part is I'm doing it to myself now. There's a little part of me that when I see that brushed titanium and that when I see that carbon weave, I think, isn't that what micro brands do? <laughs> isn't that a Zelos or isn't that an Edox or isn't that some kind of entry level look at me, look at me tactic? What's it doing in this very high end watch? And as I said, I know that that is grossly unfair. I know that that is unreasonable of me. And there's a little part of me which it would be able to, if I was doing a hard critical review where I was assessing whether this was good or bad, that I would definitely put that aside. But this is not what I'm doing here. I'm doing a hot take, a a sort of instantaneous reaction, an ill-considered, this is my emotional response video, and my ill-considered lizard brain reflex, not thinking about this at all response, is it just looks a little bit cheap. It looks a little bit try hard. It looks like you're borrowing from the look at me, look at me Kickstarter playbook. I, and I have the same problem, funnily enough, with things like the Rolex Meteorite dial. I really struggle with that. Every time I see a Rolex Meteorite dial on a watch that's made from white gold and costs $30,000, I think, well, why are you stealing Zelos styling cues? And again, I know that it is grossly unfair. Um, I, and if I was doing a review and a critique, I would put that aside. But when I'm doing my, you know, as I say, gut feel, seat of the pants, not really thinking about it, uh, hot takes, that's the feeling I get. Okay, here's the good news for companies like IWC and Rolex. I don't matter. I really don't. The vast bulk of these watches are going to be bought by people that don't even know that micro brands exist. The vast bulk of these watches are going to be bought by people that don't know that there are entry-level Swiss watch brands that have been using these design cues for a while. They won't know and they won't care to know. I suffer, and I think many of the people on the, on the internet, many Facebook users and YouTubers and Instagrammers, we all suffer from being the man who knows too much. We suffer from the fact that we know all of the market because we're hobbyists we pay attention to $500 entry-level micro brands and $50,000 high-end Rolexes, APs, Pateks etc and far beyond that we join links between all of these watches no one else does normal people don't a normal person that buys an IWC does not know that the company Zelos even exists um, <laughs> these are problems we make for ourselves. This is a lovely watch. It's very nice. Um, it's going to be fine. Um, and they'll sell a squillion of them and my attitude won't count. I'm still super glad it exists. I'm still super glad I looked at it because you know what? It taught me, it made me deal with something about me, which is kind of useful and kind of valuable. So thanks IWC for doing that. Um, yeah, that's my hot take on this watch. It's not really much about the watch, is it? But still, it's my thoughts. So that was my hot take on the IWC Chronograph Pilot Chronograph AMG Edition. It's a lovely watch. I've got some reservations about it, but as I said through the hot take, I think there is much about me and my prejudices and things I need to get past. However, I don't think I'm entirely unrepresentative of the watch enthusiast community, so I suspect a lot of those are going to be a problem. A lot of the things I raised are going to be problems for a lot of people who look at this watch. I'd be interested in your thoughts. Leave them in the comments below and uh, we'll have a chat about it. As I said on the intro, I've been Pete McConville. This is Not So Obvious Watches and I'll see you later. Bye.